hey and welcome to this review of the Dasso Mustaf 4 from Ravel and uh, this is an interesting kit so this is actually a Matchbox kit that's been repackaged and uh, re-released by Matchbox I say that it's from quite a while ago this is all the way from 2003 so it's not very recent as you can see that it's quite simple in construction and I didn't have any weights to put in so I put in some five pence pieces with some polyfiller. This later turned out to uh, not be a smart idea because it sort of uh, it wasn't great to the plastic apparently <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. But yes this kit, Matchbox kit, very simple to put together. As usual for a Matchbox kit to be fair um, it's like, like two sprues basically and it took me no time at all to assemble the whole kit. I am doing this as part of my series of the uh, La Patrouille de France, the uh, French patrol, or patrol of France, the aerobatic team of the Army de l'Air, the French Air Force, and this is the last thorough, thoroughbred fighter aircraft uh, that they used for the display team. So after this, the aircraft that come are just trainer aircraft, uh, a nice attack aircraft that's nothing. Um, that, you know was for designed for air superiority which you know make, makes us kind of an iconic aircraft because if this was of the era where you know lots of display teams had fighter aircraft and giant machines of the sky um i mean like you had like the black arrows blue diamonds in in, in the uk as well who flew the hawk hunters uh but all suisse they threw the hawk hunters as well although they flew it for quite some time and I guess this just feels like of that era as well. Now, we're going to talk about the price of this kit. It's not a cheap kit. So this kit itself, I think, currently sells between 20 to 25 pounds, which is something like 23 to 30 euros. So again, not a cheap kit. And uh, I was very lucky that I managed to find mine for 15 pounds. Now, you can see I've undercoated it here. I did have to put on some um, filler, actually, on the outside of the aircraft as well because the plastic seemed to like subside on itself. I don't know whether it was from the poly cement or whether it was from the actual stuff on the inside. It, I feel like it's from the um, the filler I put on the inside, just from the positioning of it. Um, I did smooth it out. It's still something I need to learn how to do properly, I guess, because it, it, it definitely didn't do the best job in the world. But I think it looked okay in the end. You can see some references there that I've got um, and they're linked in the description as well so you can see where they're from but I was just sort of making sure that I had good references as I went along for making this aircraft because I think that's really important. Now in terms of the colour of this aircraft it is a silver alum aluminium, uh, sorry just an aluminium I guess for the actual you know fuselage but for the wings and the tail section this is the like really the first aircraft in the Pateau de France that has the um, tricolor on the, on, the, on, the, on the wings. So that's the main event I guess here. Now there's no direct colour for this so you have to sort of match the decals and it gives you a mixture in the instructions. However I found it was more of a 50-50 mix. Um, I don't know I just eyeballed it against the actual decals themselves because what it told you to do didn't sort of seem right and from what I can see online as well looking at other people who built this they've had similar experiences so bear that in mind the colours I did use though however were just uh, gloss white and also uh, a bit of Lufthansa blue um, so there are two colours to use they are the ones that it recommends again the, just the proportions were different there I, I ended up mixing this up about four different times and it was quite easy to get the same sort of um, hue so it, it, it's, it's not too bad I did for whatever reason not do very well on the wings normally doing these tricolors I don't find very challenging I've done quite a lot of them I've done sort of Belgian ones, I've done Italian ones, I've done French ones, but for whatever reason, on this aircraft, I just couldn't do it. I think I was just pressured um, myself. I pressured myself because of the cost of the, the kit. And I knew if I screwed this one up, I, I couldn't really get another one without spending what I think is an absurd amount of money for the aircraft. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, I, I think I just pressured myself, to be honest. And, and that's a shame. But in the end, we did we did get a good result. It just took a bit longer than it probably should have done. Now white is also always a pain to do, an absolute pain. I probably should have undercoated on white on the wings, but I didn't. Again, ended up with a good result in the end. I'm just extremely impatient. 
doing white. Really, I probably should do white off stream in the future because white just isn't a great color for, for making models, I'll be honest with you. You need to really let it set and layer and layer and layer. Do lots and lots and lots of thin layers. And then you end up with a really nice, clean, glossy finish. Um, I did get an okay finish in the end, but it it just, it was very messy and it meant I screwed up quite a few times and I shouldn't have screwed up, but I was rushing things. And that's something I'm definitely gonna take into consideration going forward, because I've got two more aircraft to do that both have the trigger on the on the wings. So I can definitely bear that in mind going forward. So learning curves, yay. <laughs> In terms of the rest of the aircraft, it was just, again, it was white and then it was red. It was, um, I think, the same red that I've used on previous ones. So there was my previous Fugamudge there, uh, which was the fiery red, number 31 Ravel Aqua Color. That's what I used there. So same colors that I've used pretty much the whole time. <laughs> I don't know if it is the exact color, but it feels like it's the right color. So that's what the sort of went for. The underside of the wing, I think, is really cool because it it sort of goes across the fuselage, so I think it's just really pretty. I think it's what I've liked about the, the Miss Dare's colour scheme more than anything else, because it's, it's just got that massive tricolor uh, arrow on the bottom. I, mean, I guess it would probably fit the Frecce tricolori of the uh, Italians instead, given that they are the three coloured arrows, but that's literally what it reminds me of on the bottom here, it's just a French flag instead. <laughs> so. It didn't take too long to do it. I ended up touching it up. I think I touched it up quite a bit off stream as well. Um, and I found it a lot easier. I, I just, I guess I was not really stressing myself out on stream. Again, I think it was just the cost of the aircraft. I just kept, you know, I got it in my head about it. And I think we've all done that, you know, where we've had a model, we want to make sure it's absolutely perfect. You just get in your own head about it and then it just sort of goes wrong. And that's exactly what happened here. And that's okay as long as you can accept you know what your strengths and weaknesses are model making then you'll end up becoming a better model maker so yeah I i'm not too fussed about it once we finished painting it though it was onto the decals and the decals are what make this kit more expensive really i mean that you can buy the matchbox um sort of packages of this, of this aircraft um, which give you, there was one which was an Israeli one and one that gives you the Indian markings as well and I think there were some other companies that do it, I think Special Hobby do it or it might be the Super Mister but I wait you can get a couple of these, also sorry about that, I was obsessed with that drink that day, Bang Pina Colada, I only just found out exists, beautiful tasting drink <laughs> but yes, either way, um, the decals are, or the decals are the, the, the sort of the, the thing that everyone wants this kit for um, and it, it really does elevate the aircraft and I was quite surprised with what I got to in the end. Now I did my usual thing of using water first then decal fix once I'm happy with it. These middle ones I actually knocked off a few times and it was just sort of carelessness um, and one of them did break but again these are decals from 2003 I wouldn't expect them to hold together so the fact that only one of them really broke I'm sort of happy with there wasn't a lot to do it was mainly on the spine of the fuselage or the top of the fuselage whatever you want to say that I had to do them for the rest of it was pretty much just um, a bit underneath to sort of make the arrow shape on the underneath of the uh, uh, of the, the the aircraft as well uh, on the tail section and then um, as you can see this the, the sort of um, on the tail itself it has two decals on two uh, the, the main bit is the spine and it, it it was not the easiest it didn't seem to want to sort of confer onto the, the sort of the spinal column of the fuselage this makes the aircraft sounds way more alive than it should do but you know what I mean um, in the end one of them broke off and I did just sort of paint a red line on with um, Again, sort of a lovely fiery red and 31 and it matched perfectly. So I, I was really happy with it in the end. Um, once I did this, I did do some weathering on it. So I gloss coated it all and then I gave it some sort of black and I think it was rasp that I used, but it's just sort of to give it sort of a burn look on the engine. Um, I used that sort of on the, where the, uh, the, the wings join the fuselage because um, obviously there's a lot of stress there and I also did it all around the front of the aircraft. Everyone looks a bit comic-like, a bit, you know, over dramatic, but it matches the ND450 Huracan that I did. And I was really proud of how that aircraft turned out and I wanted to sort of match the weathering of that. And I think I did in the end. So all in all, considering the fact I was terrified of doing this aircraft because it cost so much and normally these just stay in my stash, I'm happy that I just went out and did it because 
I genuinely found it quite overwhelming to do, but I ended up with a model that I'm really happy with. So I would definitely recommend that if you have a kit that you, you've wanted to do forever and you think it looks amazing, don't hesitate, just do it. Because you're gonna end up with an amazing product and you're just gonna keep improving as a model maker, I promise you. As usual, if you have enjoyed this video, please feel free to drop me a subscribe. You can find me over on Twitch as Ms. Modeler, uh, where you can drop me a follow there and watch me do these live, and uh, also you can help support my channel there. Um, there's also a donation link on there as well. So thank you for watching my video. I really, really do appreciate it, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Enjoy looking at these wonderful pictures. Bye.